Okay, welcome back everyone. This is number 18 in chapter 11, and so this is an example problem on statics and equilibrium. And so we're given a crane, which itself has a weight of 15,000 newtons. So that's the weight of the crane. And it's carrying a box that has a weight of 11,000 newtons. And we're given a bunch of information so here's the weight of the box and actually I'll put a force in red okay so we have the weight of the box we have the weight of the crane acting at the cranes center of mass which is seven meters away from the point at which the crane touches the ground and we have a tension actually where a strong chain or rope is attached to the crane three meters from one end and we have two normal forces NY and NX and we're being asked to find the tension and the two components of the normal force NX and NY and so this is a pure statics problem and in order for us to have conditions of statics, we need to have three things. F net in the x direction is zero, F net in the y direction is zero, and then the net torque about a point of rotation must be equal to zero. And these are all vectors. Okay, so these are the conditions of statics. So if you want another look at the forces involved, this is the diagram that the book provides in the solutions. And so you can see that they call them FV and FH, but it's the same thing. Um, and you can see that the tension is acting at an angle of 25 degrees to the crane. The crane itself is at 55 degrees. And then we have the weight of the crane and the weight of the box. Okay, so let's go ahead and start setting up our equations. And we'll just keep in mind that this angle here is 30 degrees. So that means that T is going to have two components. Tx is going to be T cosine of 30 and Ty is going to be T sine of 30. And that's in the third quadrant, so technically they'll both be negative. Okay, so let's look at our first condition, that F net in the X direction is zero. Well, what this means is that NX is going to be equal to T cosine 30. Okay, well, if you look at that, that's two unknowns. Okay, now we could write that as, well, we'll leave it as cosine 30. Okay, so that's equation one. Equation two is the net force in the y direction is equal to zero. And the only positive force we have here is NY, so that must be equal to all the other negative forces. We have the weight of the crane, the weight of the box, and we also have T sine of 30. Okay, now that also gives us two unknowns, albeit different ones. Okay, we still have tension, but now we have NY. Here's NX and tension. And now for our third equation, we must use torques. And you can do torques about any point you like, but it's going to be useful to pick this point P as the point where the torques act. And so what this does is it actually allows us to say that the, the torque from the normal force is equal to zero because it passes through P. Okay, so basically for equation three, we're going to set up our direction so that any torque which is counterclockwise would be positive and any torque which is clockwise 
would be negative. And that's a convention that we use fairly often. Okay, so I'm going to just zoom in on my diagram. And so what we can see is if I extend the weight of the box to its point of contact with the crane, and then if I draw like so, then this is going to be 25, so this is going to be 55. Any angle that's 55 will get a single mark through it. And so what that means is that we can write the torque from the box as equal to the force, so the weight of the box, but not all of it. We can only take the perpendicular component, so it's going to be times the cosine of 55 degrees, and then we must multiply that by the distance it acts at, which is 16 meters. Okay, now the weight of the box we actually know. The weight of the box is 11,000, so I can put that in. Okay, and finally we look at it and realize that's going to cause a negative torque, so we put a negative sign on that. Okay, now we move to the torque caused by the tension. Let's zoom in again, and if I do the same thing with my red line, like so. Well, I should be able to see that this angle here with two marks is the one that I want. And that angle is actually going to be 65 degrees. So I hope that you can see that because we have 25 to here. So we have an additional 65 to make a right angle. And so what that means for us is that the torque from the tension is going to be the value of the tension, which we don't know yet, times the cosine of 65 degrees, and that's all going to be multiplied by 13 meters. And that's going to be a positive torque. Finally, we look at the torque from the weight, the weight of the crane. And it turns out that this, this is going to have the exact same form as the torque from the box because those forces point pretty much in the same direction. We're just going to have a different distance. So it will be a negative torque. We'll have 15,000 newtons for our force. And then we're going to have the cosine of 55 degrees again. But now we're only going to have 7 meters. Okay, so this is acting at the center of gravity. Okay, now if I add all these up, I'm going to get a net torque of zero. And so I could write all that out, but I just write it like this. The torque from the box plus the torque from the tension plus the torque from the crane all equals zero. And the only unknown that I see in that entire system of three things is the tension T. And you're going to find, hopefully, if you crunch through this math very carefully, you're going to find that it's equal to 29,300 newtons. Okay, so that finds us the tension. And now we can go back and figure out everything else. For example, we could find Nx. It's equal to tension times the cosine of 30. And so that gets us about 25,400 newtons. And we can also get Ny. So that's the weight of the crane plus the weight of the box plus the tension times the sine of 30 and that gets us 40,700 newtons. Whoops, didn't mean to get that one half. And so that's it. That's our tension and the 
horizontal and vertical components of the normal force.